Hey fellas, welcome to another exciting episode here at Prime Model Works Headquarters. It's going to be kind of a two-parter because we're doing something special. Yeah, I got my survivor hat on, my uh, Jeff Probe survivor hat on because my hair is an absolute wreck. Trying to grow a mullet, my wife keeps wanting to cut it, but my daughter says no. So anyway, I haven't produced a video in a while, and uh, but I have been doing stuff. I built two 132nd scale HO229s. There's one. And then I got another. Oh, this is the other one here. I did something really cool with this other one, and uh, some of these things are going to fly off. But I did, uh, I painted this whole thing in like a wood look with, with all the wood stuff, with all the wood panels painted, and then uh, all the metallic stuff painted metallic. And just because I always wanted to do that, but I knew I was going to have to paint over it anyway. But I left some of those panels open. If you can see that, it's kind of cool. But uh, there we go. It's kind of neat. Anyway, so I've got these. And uh, this is for the same guy that I've built like the last three planes for. And I'm not covering that because I've already done one of those on video. And to be honest with you, I just enjoyed building it without having to film stuff. But the owner wanted a drag chute behind one of them on a display base. So I've got a parachute done. It's a 135th scale parachute. Eh. And that will be the focus of this video. Now, I got the parachute from this 135th scale Zvezda German Paratroopers kit. And it was extremely hard to find. I found one from some uh, company in the Ukraine that sent it to me. It was like 20 bucks. I can't remember the name of it. And I, for, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I had to do a lot of searching to find it. But I found one, 20 bucks, shipped to my house. Now, I could have got one on Amazon. It was going to be like 80 bucks. And I think these, eventually, these uh, occasionally come up on eBay. I think there's one on there now. But it comes with all these soldiers and then uh, the parachute, which comes in like seven different pieces. To put together but it's a really cool looking parachute and we'll look at it more um but uh so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna paint the parachute in this episode get that all taken care of and then in the next episode we're going to do the display base which is going to be like a 15 inch by 30 inch display base it's going to look like a german tarmac um so that's where we're at okay so here is uh, a little diagram that the that the owner sent me how he wants this to look. So uh, initially we were going to do two of these HO229s on one base. And then he decided that, uh, or the owner decided that <clears throat> he'd like to see a drag chute behind it. So that's what we're attempting to do here. And he's got this, this is going to be 30 inches by 15 inches. So it's going to be a big base. Of course, it's a big plane. And then when you add the drag chute, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff to put on one, one base. So that's kind of what we're going for right there. That's what we're that's what we're shooting for. So uh, let's get on with it. All right. So I've got this thing primed, and I used Mister Finishing Servicer 1500 Gray, and uh, there this thing comes in like seven different pieces. It does go together pretty well, <laughs> believe it or not. I didn't think it would be uh, th this easy to put together, but it was fairly easy. Now. There's a couple different sections up here that you have to put in, which leaves a seam line right along here. And you can, if you look real close, you can kind of see where some of those seams were here on the inside. I think once I get it painted, those are going to go away. On the back, it looks really good. And uh, I'm really actually impressed with this parachute. It <laughs> looks really nice. So, like I said, I've got it primed and I'm going to paint it green. So I'm going to use olive green, which is XF58. And what I've done is I've mixed 10% of the green with 90% white. And I've used X2, which is the gloss white, just because I have a bunch of this. And I hardly ever use it, so I want to get rid of it um, rather than waste my uh, flat white. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and paint the whole thing with this real light color. And then I'll come in with an airbrush. And I'm going to start going in and painting some darker areas right along here where the... Uh, these seams would be where the, I guess the, uh, the parachute cord would, would, uh, come around and, and, uh, and, and hold the parachute all together. 
All right, so I've got my base coat down, nice even finish. I've got some kind of a cobweb or something there, but a nice smooth finish. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get up close and personal. Now I could come in with a real fine airbrush, but uh, what I'm gonna do is just use my Awada HPCS, which has a 0.35 millimeter nozzle. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the little guard, needle guard off here. So I've got my needle and I can get real up close I've got it about 9 PSI right now. I may turn that down actually because in order to get this to do a really fine line, I'm going to mix this with some isopropyl alcohol. Now with uh, Tamiya paints, you can mix them with IPA or uh, lacquer thinner or the, um, the uh, thinner that comes with it. The, uh, I forgot what it is, X20A maybe. Okay. Yeah, that's probably too much. Dump some of that out for what I need. So I've got about that much of 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to create a really thin mixture. Now, I'm not really measuring this out. I'm just doing it by eye. But we're going to create probably a uh, 80 to 90% thinner to... 10% paint here. So it's going to be really thin. And the reason that I want to use isopropyl alcohol is because it dries really quickly. So I can get up close and I can spray it and it's going to dry almost um, instantaneously. Whereas if I use some, some of my uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, it's going to take a while to dry and it's going to spider web and it's going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. But I can get in with a low air pressure and a real thin mixture of this and shoot this really close. Okay. I may have to do some more adjustment, but we'll see. So we'll go ahead and I've got my portable air compressor out here. So I'm gonna have to do some acrobatics so I don't spill this everywhere. Okay. So I can get right up close. And it's okay if I go over, because I'm probably gonna have to do some adjustment and some, uh, some fine tuning. And it's gonna be somewhat difficult with this piece because these are like so close. And my hands are a little shaky because I just got done weed eating and mowing the yard. It might not be the best opportunity to do this. I'm just going to go along and I'm going to go down these lines and I'm going to darken where the rope would be. Just like so. I'm going to go going to go down each one of these. I've got it really thin. So I, even though it is with isopropyl alcohol, I don't want to stay on one spot too long because it will spider. I'm also going to come in here where we've got some of these creases, like right along here. I'm just going to darken right along inside of that crease and build up that color. Man, my hands are, ooh, see I got too close. We'll clear up that. And I might have this a little thinner than I want. But, uh, Look at how bad my hand's shaking. Ew. It's because I'm nervous for being on camera. <laughs> hey, don't do this after you weed eat your yard and, and then mow it. OK. 
come along here, spray down in that crease. So it's going to take a lot of time. Come along here, spray down in there. Darken that up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get along with this, get on with this. It's gonna take me, take me a while to get this, uh, get this all lined out. And then we'll take a look and see what it looks like and what I need to do next. Alrighty, fellas. So here's where we're at now. Now, after I shaded the areas where the ropes are, and then some of these recessed areas in the fabric, with the olive green. I took the same diluted olive green mixture and I blended everything in. So I've got, uh, it's it was just a little too white, a little too light. And uh, I darkened the areas along the bottom a little more. So uh, uh, I wouldn't exactly call this translucent, but I, I am happy with the way it looks so far. I don't know, we'll see once it gets on the on the base and see what it looks like. But for now, what I'm going to do is I've got some mineral spirits here, and then I've got my black Aptalung oil paint, and I'm just going to create a wash, and I'm going to go along and shade some of these, uh, or shade the areas where the rope is, just to darken those up just a little bit more. So I've just got my, my brush here. I'm going to go along and just do a pin wash, and we're going to see how this works. Now, I haven't coated this with anything. Just like so. And this hopefully will give it a little bit more depth. I'm trying to get my mixture right. And I just do this a little bit at a time. And hopefully, there we go. That's what I'm looking for right there. Now this is going to kind of spread out as you see. And if I need to, I can come back in with my olive green. And I can adjust. Kind of looks like a mess right there, doesn't it? And then I can clean it up with a wet brush, just like so. Now once this dries, it's gonna dry a little bit lighter than what we see here. Right along the edge. And this is just gonna add a little bit more shading to the areas where the ropes are is going to darken it up just a bit. And I think it's just going to add a little bit more depth. Whoa. Not quite as much recess there as I thought there was. And then again, I can take my mineral spirits and I can clean this up. And then once it dries, I can do the same thing and kind of clean up where I don't want it. Now I didn't spray any, um, any uh, clear coats on this. This is just the Tamiya paint that I've got on here. So this is a flat, basically a flat coat. There's no uh, clear coat or gloss coat or anything. I'm just doing this right on top of the Tamiya paint. And again, these acrylics won't be affected by the uh, mineral spirits and the oil paint. And I do want this somewhat dirty. Oh man, see how that spreads out? I got a little, I think I might have to get a smaller brush. I don't know, I may like this look, who knows. I'm just gonna go along Just like so. And add a little bit more shading than what I had. And 
just like so. Okay, now I can already see down here where it's starting to dry. I'm going to want to take away a lot of this. So I'll just wet my brush with the mineral spirits. Come in. Spread that out. like that okay so I'm gonna go ahead and keep keep on with this once I get all these areas where the rope is um, shaded then um, we'll, we'll let it dry we'll come back reassess see what else needs to be done and then uh, start cleaning up where I don't want the, the shading but I think that's just gonna give it a little bit more depth all right, fellas, so I've got uh, this side done and all shaded, and I'll show you what I'm doing. So <clears throat> because I've got a flat coat on here and uh, my wash tends to crawl out, so what I'm doing is I'm just taking a, a flat brush. It's kind of stiff, dipping it in my mineral spirits, and I'm just coming along and blending this in. So I'm kind of I'm wiping it away. See, I'll come along like this. And then I'm just going to blend it in and add that shading right along those edges. Just like so. It gives me a nice <clears throat> smooth gradient of shading right along these lines where the the ropes would be. And I keep dipping it in. Now I don't want to flood this area because I don't want to, I just want to get my, my brush moistened with this uh, odorless mineral spirits. Just like so. And I can blend it in. And then when it dries, I can still come back and I can blend some more. If there's some spots that I missed, I can come in and take care of those. But that's basically all it is. This is an, an odd shape. And then that way I can control how much shading that I add to this. And it's just going to give it a little bit more depth. Just like that. Clean this up a little bit. There we go, just like so. All right, I'm gonna finish this up and then uh, I'll probably put a flat coat on it, see what it looks like, see if there's anything else I need to do to it. I'm really liking the way this is turning out though. All right, so I've got a flat coat on here to protect all my paintwork. And you can see I've got some panels taped off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some clear orange and I'm gonna put a real light coat to uh, just give some more visual interest like one of these panels is um, just a, a different shade, just a little different color. And I don't know how much of this is going to show up. But I think it's just going to give a little bit more interest to it. It's going to show up more on the lighter parts, on the highlights. Now you could use, uh, you know, whatever color you wanted, but I think orange. 
gonna give it more of a brown look, maybe a brownish look to it than, than if I were to use like, uh, to me, a smoke or a, uh, a cooler color. So I've got this mixed with isopropyl alcohol. I like to usually mix my uh, my clear colors with I IPA, just because uh, I try to spray it real thin so I can gradually build up the colors. And it's easiest to use IPA because it doesn't. It, like I said before, it dries really quickly, and that's what I want, so I don't get spider webbing and I just have a little bit more control over it. All right. It's kind of hard to tell with the tape on, but, so we will uh, peel this tape up, see what we got, if it makes much of a difference. I think it will, but I've been wrong before. Uh. Uh, my tape is sticky. Okay, so there we go. And then once I get a flat coat on this, a lot of these highlights and shading that I did, and this uh, orange color will probably pop out a little bit more than, than what it looks like here with this kind of satin finish on it. And like I said, this is just going to add a little bit more visual interest. I'm going to use that term a lot, visual interest, <laughs> for uh, for my little experiments here. There we go. All right, I think that's going to look pretty cool. It's not real noticeable. It's not like in your face, but uh, I think once I get the flat coat on there, and get it all together on the uh, on the on the display base. It's going to look really cool. So that's just one little extra thing that I'm throwing in there for you, for us. All right, fellas, I've got it done. I've got it all strung up. Now, what I used for the rope was this uh, upholstery thread that I got at Walmart. And I don't know much about upholstery th thread, but it looked uh, a little bit heavier than what you'd see in like normal thread you'd use to. Sew up your blue jeans or something, but uh, there we go. It's nylon, so uh, 28 strands is what it took, and I've got the end of it glued into a little brass or a little uh, uh, styrene tube, and then on the end I've got a magnet attached. And on the bottom of my plane here, down where the parachute is, I've also got a magnet embedded in there. So um, all I need to do is put this right here and then I can well, go ahead and lift this up and just stick the parachute onto the magnet and then lay it down like this. Now I'll probably have to do some adjustments once I get uh, the base all done and I'll probably also do some weathering on the uh, the parachute cord and uh, it, not all of it's taut. I don't, uh, 
not all these ropes are as tight as I want them to be. So we may have to do some manipulating. But again, this is going to have to be set up by the owner. And it's really hard to adjust because I'm going to have to ship this thing. And it, it's just, there are a, a lot of different little challenges involved in this. But I think I've got the basic premise there. And uh, there may be some adjustments that I'll do once I get the base all done, like I said. So, but either way, um, I'm pretty happy with it. Now, this is really fragile. It's kind of hard to pick up because I don't want to knock any of these off. The ends of these strands are glued on with um, a UCA glue to attach the ends to the little uh, spots on the parachute. And then I took some wood glue and put a little dab of wood glue on each one of those as well. So uh, to give a little bit more strength than just the CA glue. So hopefully the ropes stay on there, the thread stays on there, but uh, that's what it looks like.